Hi everybody, thanks for coming back to part two of our discussion on relics and artifacts. Today I want to look at personal items, things that we find that are directly connected to the men and sometimes women that were in these camps so long ago. Which brings me around to a topic I want to touch on and just tackle it straightforward. We get asked a lot about the ethics of, of what we do as history seekers or metal detectors or, or even treasure hunters. Um, I believe that a society that respects its past will protect its history. The items that I'm showing you today uh, would not have been recoverable some even five, ten years from now. They would have rotted away uh, into the dust and the elements and the weather and you would have never had an opportunity to see them. I think that's important. I realize that everybody has a different opinion on this. Some of them are very strong and I respect them all. Uh, but I'd like to express to you guys what my opinion is on uh, the collection and preservation of these artifacts as it pertains to ethics. Uh, keep in mind that this is not someone's grave site. Uh, this is most often a, a garbage dump uh, that we're looking through. These are uh, folks that were up in the mountains. They didn't care about littering. They didn't have an EPA. They left a ton of junk around. And believe me, they wouldn't have been upset if we would have pulled it out of the ground and uh, celebrated their history as men and workers 150 years later. I welcome your emails. Um, I always welcome a discussion on the issue. Uh, hopefully this has uh, helped you understand a little bit of what uh, my thoughts are on the issue. So without further ado, I'm Jeff and welcome to Okay, in part one, we talked about some of the glassware that we had found, and one of the great relics that I just cherish is this beautiful inkwell and pen uh, that we found at a site that we have referred to as the commissary. Uh, we did some research on this specific inkwell and found that it is a Stanford 39. Apparently, it's um, quite rare. Um, and it's about 120 years old, but it's in pristine condition. There's not a chip on it. Um, and right next to it, in one of our episodes, you'll see this, we recovered the pen. So we like to keep it just like that. Uh, it would have sat on somebody's desk, maybe the guy who was writing down um, information about the daily harvest or um, the guys that were in the field at that time or even a supply list. Uh, so I think it's a really fascinating connection um, to that history. Okay, you've got to imagine that the hygiene back in the camp was not what it was today. And unless you were going to take a bath down in the Glacier Melt River, uh, bathing opportunities were probably limited. And that's why this next piece that I'm going to show you was so incredible to find. Uh, it is this. Bakelite handle to a hairbrush and when I saw it when it came out of the ground um, it was a little bit shocking because you don't think about these guys uh, brushing their hair every day and uh, taking care of themselves in the ways that we do today but uh, somebody out there was uh, trying to look pretty and um, fascinating piece it's got a couple of little metal rivets on the back that the metal detector pinged off of, but um, really kind of cool to see that. We've talked about this next piece in a couple of our episodes and I want to show it off again because it's, it's so amazing to me to see it. This is a tiny pair of period spectacles. I'll hold those up just as close as I can to the camera so you can see them. And you'll notice that one of the lenses is still intact. It's almost a surreal experience to have seen these guys staring back up at me out of the ground. 
like a face from so long ago. But truly an amazing uh, piece of uh, history. And uh, as I look through the lens, there's not much of a prescription to it, uh, just slightly. So um, just a beautiful piece of, of history that, that would have otherwise just rotted away uh, into oblivion. This piece in front of me is maximum coolness. This is one of the greatest things that I think we've been able to recover uh, out of this site that we refer to as the commissary. It is a boot, almost entirely intact. Uh, we've had some comments from uh, viewers that indicate that these may have been camp issued Civil War surplus boots. So, so to see this leather uh, still intact is is striking to say the least. Uh, you can see the brass rivets here um, and then you can see the entire sole is intact along with some of the tree climbing spikes still embedded uh, in the bottom. But this almost complete boot came out of an area that we refer to as the commissary like I mentioned uh, and it is striking. You can see some, uh, some nice moss growing out of the top of that right there. But this is the original leather. Uh, you can see the uh, original patterns that wasn't too decorative and there was no need for that. Um, the soles are a little thin. Would have been tough to climb around the mountains in these guys, but somehow they made it happen. Uh, but I'm really proud uh, to have recovered this piece of pioneer history. Now for the find of the day. I know that I always say, this piece is my favorite, this piece is my favorite, but this piece really is. This is an original Hendrix 40 fishing reel that was manufactured in the late 1800s to very early 1900s, about up to 1914. Some of the original line, as you can see, is still on the spool. Uh, the crank obviously is seized up, uh, but this is a complete Hendrix 40. So named because the spool held 40 yards of line. How do we know it's a Hendrix 40? Because the clamp that attaches to the pole, and all you fishermen out there will recognize that, is labeled with a 40. And this one's worth standing up for. So if you can see that, the number 40 is marked on the inside of this attachment band that was found next to the fishing reel. Men, you know how amazing it would be to uh, see this uh, in the dirt. But if you're responsible for most of your food, you gotta have a fishing reel. And that's one of the, the most uh, amazing pieces in our collection so far. I want to show you now one of the uh, points of pride in our collection. It is this completely intact silver plated pocket watch that we found early last season at this area we call the trading post. Um, as you can see, there is an acrylic type of a lens on the front, which indicates early 1900s, maybe 1920, 1925. There is no uh, inscription or identifying marks on the back, one winding mechanism on the top, and it is always astonishing to find bits and pieces of the pocket watches and to see one that's intact right out of the ground really blew our minds. Uh, super cool piece and i um, so happy to be able to share that with you. Well that's going to wrap up part two of our discussion on relics and artifacts. I hope you've enjoyed seeing some of these personal items. Really cool to think about the people that lived here so long ago and made our lives possible the way we know it today. And we look forward to our next discussion. We're gonna talk about hand tools, and axe heads, and hammers, and all kinds of good stuff. So until next time, 